bum. Yeah. Oh, this is so amazing. So Carlisle Farm Museum is a living history museum. If you couldn't tell, you're not just dressed like this for the heck of it. <laughs> Actually, maybe, I do as well. Uh, and maybe you just do. I'm fun to go shopping with. Oh my gosh, this smells really good. <laughs> as I, I smell this axe. So um, let's talk a little bit about the museum. Yes. Um, 18th century life, really working to keep that alive. Mm -hmm. So the farm is dedicated to showing what the lives of Federalist era tenant farmers was like in Bristol. And so it's... Uh, after the American Revolution, spoilers, we won. <laughs> so this is kind of what happens next for your everyday, not your George Washingtons, not your Sam Adams. This is your regular everyday family. Just your regular folks who mm -hmm. are using, what is this, a backhoe? This is an ads. An ads. And so you take the tree down with the axe. Okay. And then you shape the tree with the ads. With the ads. So using an ads, you can do something. So this is February. So this is okay. all, this is February. You get sappy, right? Valentine's Day happens. Oh, yeah. But also maple sugaring happens. So that's what's going on this week, of course, at Cogshell Farm. So that's why I brought things all to do with our maple sugaring. So this, couldn't bring the whole tree. I brought part of the tree. This is a maple tree. Oh, okay. So. Also, everything smell smells, too, too much. It's, it, it all okay. smells like a, a wood stove or wood fire. That's also me. Yeah. <laughs> so you take down the tree with the axe, use the adze to make a trencher. You put the trencher underneath the maple tree. You have an auger. You go in only about an inch, inch and a half. And then you put in your spile. Okay. So that's what you Into put the side of there. Oh, is this okay? And then sap drips, collects in the trencher. You go around to the trenchers with your buckets and your yoke, and you pour it from the trencher into the bucket, you bring it back to the camp, and you boil it down and make maple syrup or maple sugar. That's amazing. That is fascinating. And so this was all done by hand. All right by then. hand. And you're doing this... I don't need a gem. <laughs> No, I, I can imagine. And you have classes going on this week. All about so, maple sugaring. All about maple sugaring. So tell us about that and uh, how kids can come and, and find out and do this themselves. Absolutely. So we are open to the public from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Uh, all the way until Sunday. For So the rest of the school vacation week till Sunday. Then we're going to keep maple sugaring until March 19th, every weekend, um, 10 to 4. And admission for adults during weekdays is five and kids is three. And then on the weekends, it's seven and five. Um, but you can come in. It, this is included with regular admission to the farm. So you get to come into the admissions office where you could also buy some maple sugar that's made from our sap. And from there, you get to learn all about what life is like in the house over the winter months. You can come down, visit the maple sugar camp, see just what it was like to be making maple sugar 200 years ago. Visit the animals. And enjoy yourself at the farm. And what I think is really neat about this is that everybody looks like this. Everybody is really, I was looking at pictures, everybody's dressed like that, and it's all in character. Yes, all, well, we do third-person interpretation, yes. so there's none of this, howdy, stranger, you yeah. look strange. None of that, nobody likes that. Um, but instead, we are dressed, you know, we party like it's 1799, <laughs> a little old school. And, uh, and we also, we try to get everybody's hands dirty. So today, today's day one of maple sugaring um, for us. So I don't know how many kids I had using the augers and tapping the trees and helping, you know, set everything up. And we believe in child labor. <laughs> in a good way. In a good way. Everybody goes up home with all their digits. So it's... That's good. Because this, I feel like, could take... That could take This out. could take some, some digits off. So what's that like to see to see kids out there putting away their phones and I have parents too parents putting too. away their phones and actually getting in and, and, and working. Doing it's it's great. It's, it's one of my favorite reasons of why I do what I do. That and also you know modern technology. I'm bad at. <laughs> at this point, you're bad. I kind of just like holding on to this. You can hang on to it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, it's gonna, comfortable. I'm gonna sit at it. It is kind of. I mean, That's my favorite axe. <laughs> How many axes do you have? We have a lot of axes at the farm, but this is actually my axe. That axe and me have gone through many adventures. <laughs> it's handy. And so you do a lot of programs besides just the maple sugar, and you do a lot of programs. Yes, there. we do a lot of programs. Uh, we do hearth cooking workshops, candle making workshops, lip bombs. Uh, when the garden is actually, you know, producing something again, uh, we get people involved with, you know, uh, helping to plant, helping to weed. Um, 
this year we're you know going to be doing even more hearth cooking workshops where we're just taking stuff literally right out of the garden and then learning how to cook it over and over in the hearth. Wow. So it's pretty fun. Really getting back to those to those roots. Mm -hmm. And why do you think it's important for this museum to stay open? Uh, we're an integral part of the nation's history. I mean, there's so much that isn't talked about um, that if you just gloss over, if you just focus on the, you know, the George Washingtons and, and, and those that were in charge, you miss out on how it all happened. And this is, this is important. Not to mention um, the way that a lot of things were done in the 18th century is coming back now into fashion as far as farming practices as sustainable agriculture. But if you weren't sustainable 200 years ago, you weren't a farmer. <laughs> so, you, so we take what was being done that was smart and we reintroduce that. And we look at the things that they did that it's just like, why, why, why would you do that? Why would anybody do it? Well, because we didn't have any idea about germ theory. Don't worry, kids, it's just a theory. Um, so we can kind of take what was good about the past and bring it back, and we can learn from what didn't work so well. And and I, I really like some of the things that you do. I mean, you said lip balm making, what? Mm -hmm. And candle making. That's right. But We're not preppers. We're historical archaeologists trying things out. I love that. But if the water fails, hey, I, I'm fine. There you go. Uh, and you also have shanty nights. We Tell me about this. Nights. So myself and a couple other people at the farm, we were um, on tall ships before coming to Cogshell Farm Museum. And so when we came to Cogshell Farm Museum, we decided, hey, we know about 200 shanties apiece. Let's do something unique and just invite people because Bristol used to be one of the major trading ports of North America. So we figured, well, it's our time period. We might as well celebrate the working history of, of the sea. That's, and you do that through stone. 